Cue fake podcast music. Ba da 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 da. Hello and welcome to Michigan Another Mayhem, the short, the show, the show. Yeah, it's a show. Right about Michigan murder mysteries, histories, and other random mayhem from around the world. Your hosts are Ali and Jen. Okay, and the one thing I just want to start with is talk about podcasts that we like because there are a couple that I've recently stumbled onto and I do really like them. Mm-hmm. So one I like is called. Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet, and it's a brother and sister from, um, I think it's Illinois or Ohio. I think they might be in Ohio. One that's just cute. It's yes. a brother and sister. Yep. They read one-star Yelp reviews, and sometimes they'll read five-star, but it's like really dramatic ones or where people are being our jerks in there. It's very funny. Mm-hmm. I might not be selling it properly, but it's called Beach Too Sandy, <laughs> Water Too Wet. There's another one that I and like. That, hold on. Yeah. So that's all they do. They read Yelp. Do they say stuff about it? Yeah, well, they give each like other commentary. Ch- they do comments. They try to read it dramatically, you know, like it's the worst thing that ever happened if that's what the person's saying in there. <laughs> they give each other challenges, like um, the brother challenged the sister to find an ice cream shop review that mentions broccoli. She had she gave him the challenge of finding um, a zoo review that mentions dinosaurs and they did and they picked sometimes they picked different places different cities like the brother was challenged with um finding one star reviews for hair salons in ann arbor michigan do they only do like a certain state um no they do they go all around because they really need to do coco beach hotels because remember when my parents were going and then i seen all the reviews on the hotels there yeah and you realize it's like you're going to be murdered. Yeah. They do funny, funny things. Do, mm-hmm. And they even do five-star reviews that were really funny. Okay. And I like um, Family Secrets. It's basically people go on there, one one, ep- it's one you know episode is one person, and they go on there and tell like basically a family secret. A lot of it is um, your dad is not your dad for various reasons. Like one lady found out she was the product of IVF and not her father's biological child, but instead in vitro fertilization. Yeah, if I went on there, it would be like, my family secret is the fact, like, it would, oh, it has to be a whole big family secret, not just your own secret. It could be your own. Oh, because, I mean, I have things like, I'd have to admit that I took my brother's Star Wars toy and broke it. Right. I mean, there is nothing <laughs> it was in fam- the King family. Right. To talk about? To talk about. They're I recently just had boring. a cousin find, uh, two of my cousins found their biological father through DNA testing, and that's actually... The woman, Danny Shapiro, that is the host of the show, mm-hmm. um, similarly had a surprise during DNA testing. She's the one that found out she was an IVF baby. So, I've had that around me. My friend found his father through a DNA test. Like, mm-hmm. that's cha- DNA tra- testing kits are changing people's lives. Yeah, well, I think back in the day, people didn't realize that later on we would have the technology and, you know, to find out who our biological parents are. Because a lot of people, it didn't come out until some type of DNA test or something like that that proved, like, nope, that really wasn't my dad. Or these actually aren't my parents. Yeah, I look so much like my mother. And then I have a lot. I mean, my whole personality is like my dad. So I'm pretty sure they're my parents. Yeah. Well, it hasn't happened in 10 years, for... but people used to think my sisters and I were triplets. One time we were at the Ann Arbor Recycle Center, and the lady's asking my oldest sister, because I'm the middle child, I'm the middle daughter, asking my oldest and younger sister, are you two twins? And which, it's killing Cassie, the younger one, because she's like, I don't want to think that I look eight years older. And Poppy's like, hell yeah, I look eight years younger, or whatever. And they go, no, we're not twins. And just then I come around the corner, because I'd been looking at some books to read, I'm like, oh, hold on, guys, I got something. The lady goes, oh, I get it, triplets. <laughs> you guys do look a lot alike. Yeah, I assure you, there's eight years between the oldest and the youngest. I'm right in the middle. But I do, when you guys are together, I yeah. think you guys look similar, but you guys have three totally different personalities. Oh, heck yeah. It's hilarious. We used to say that Cassie was the nice sister. That's how you She know. is super sweet. <laughs> I know, right? Poppy, I still love you. Yeah, right. They're all they're all sweet to me. But yes. you can tell but she's a teacher. She is. So a you teacher. just automatically oh you're a teacher? Oh, you're so super sweet. Right. She is the like the nicer. <laughs> and you one. must have great patience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so I was wondering, so for this um 
episode, I was hoping we could do additional information on podcasts. We do the continuing conversations on our websites, but I was wondering, you know, I was hoping we could do additional info, follow-ups that we talk about. That's what you told me. Yes. So early this morning at 5 a.m., oh, I was kidding. Yeah, yeah, poor thing, because I was drinking last night. Oh, like, I, I had it, two. We I, went out for, like, dinner, lunch dinner. <laughs> I get up this morning at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I can see that Jen's been drinking again. So, I'll, oh, almost 10 o'clock at night. This is, <laughs> this is funny. Yesterday was so funny. Well, one, so people have a backstory. I have a squirrel trying to get it. Got into the house. Mm-hmm. We sealed the hole. Then, then yesterday, wake up. The squirrels almost made another hole, so I'm completely at war. I'm going to murder a squirrel. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, you guys came over to help, and then we went to lunch dinner. Uh-huh. I had a few drinks. Uh-huh. Came home. <laughs> Mel called Melanie, my sister, and was yeah. like, what you doing? And... She's like, oh, I'm hungry. So she wanted to go out. I'm like, okay, I'll have some drink. I'll have another Cosmo. And then here I am, like 30 minutes later, sitting down, eating a whole other meal. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. Like two drinks later, another meal. Yeah, you were yeah. drinking Cosmos at the first place. And I ate all kinds of stuff that I'm not supposed to eat. <gasps> so I woke up today with a hangover, a horrible headache. And, and your insides are probably yeah, struggling. Yeah, it's like, oh my God. Like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I came home, yeah, pretty pretty messed up thinking, oh, I got to do the stuff for the podcast. And so I had my computer. So this is a result of hangover work? Yep. I, well, I had my computer last night and yeah. I turned it on and I don't know what happened. I woke up and nothing was done. <laughs> So this morning, That was yeah. the Cosmo typing for you right there. <laughs> so four, I I did, I went, I actually went through all of them. Okay. And there's four updates. Okay. So. I don't know how many updates I have. I have a few. Some of them are kind of short. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Yeah, or you want to do it by, did you organize oh. yours by date? Yeah. So. You, okay, you, my first one is October 2018. It's a follow up from a podcast we did in October of 2018. I, oh, hold on. I wasn't. I know I said that. Oh. Um, <laughs> You're like. I'm not. Nice. I don't have one till January 11th. Okay, so, so you go until you get to January 11th. Okay. The Benton Harbor House of David. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So from the podcast we did in October 2018, the Benton Harbor House of David is a cult that was established in Benton Harbor, Michigan in 1903. The cult membership peaked in the 1920s with a religious entity owning an island and an amusement park. And due to sexual abuse uh, scandal in the late 1920s, the House of David split into two factions, both remaining in the area, and the House of David is known for their baseball team exhibitions. Well, today's information came from an article that was sent to me by Shelly, one of our co-workers. So a man named Phil Lease was told stories by his father how he was once a catcher for a game that was pitched by the Baseball Hall of Fame member Satchel Paige. And Phil's dad, George, used to play baseball for a local team in Denver, Colorado. So Phil remembered George telling him that Satchel threw the ball so hard that his hand was swollen twice its normal size after the game, just from catching that fastball. Wow. Yeah, Satchel was known for, like, just throwing the ball to basically cut on fire midair. <laughs> so what Phil didn't know was how his dad, George, managed to be on the same team as Satchel Page. Like, how did that happen? His dad's just a local ball player in Denver. Well, one day Phil was listening to NPR and he heard about a man named Chris Siriano who had written a book on Satchel Page. So Chris solves the mystery for Phil. There was a barnstorming tournament and Satchel Page was playing with the House of David and they came to town. And Cy Perkins, who is Satchel's regular catcher, wasn't able to make it to the city to play. So George agreed to be his backup and was given a House of David jersey to play in. And it, that's the jersey that Phil used to play in when he was a kid. His oh, dad's old cool. House of David jersey. I was like, oh, that's really cool. Somebody that helped cool. him figure it out. Yeah. So you've got a January 2019? Yeah, and you know what we need to look up to? What's that? that House of David. Yeah. Is, I thought they were reopening the amusement, the amusement park. park. Yeah. Not maybe with rides, but I yeah. think you can go there. They reopened it. Why do we, we need to have you a road trip? You want to do it? I'm down. road trip. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but January 11th, what's your next one? Oh, I just wrote down sometime in January 2019. You tell me yours. So January 11th, we did an episode of the pastor who killed the 
transgendered woman. Yeah. So an update on that is recent. I didn't write it down. I think it was March. Okay. Albert Walters will be officially tried for open murder in December for killing Kelly Stell. And that's one where he came in, he kills the he kills the transgender person and then punches in at work or something. Is that the one? Yeah, it's out yeah, out on the street. Yeah, kills the transgender person. Yep. Comes, shoots her. Yeah. And then goes to work, punches in, and then calls the police. Yes, and says that he was attacked by her. Yep. Yep. Okay. Mr. Weathers is stating that his intent was not to discharge his weapon. It went off by mistake. Oh. Yeah. So. I don't think so. So in December, we'll get an update on that. You know what I just realized? Hmm. My stuff wasn't perfectly in order because I do have oh, a November okay. of 2018. Well, how about we just go back and forth? That's a good idea. Your turn. All right. So mine is from a podcast that we did in November of 2018. Mm-hmm. So I talked about the lake surgeon being the Great Lakes answer. Um, we've had... Great um, sturgeon in the Great Lakes for 136 million years. And I feel like it's Michigan's answer to Florida's alligator. Like, we have stuff here that was here when dinosaurs came. Yeah. Okay? They just don't eat you. Yeah. <laughs> so today's inf- um, additional information comes from an article I read. Last spring, the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources, released more than 12,000 juvenile sturgeon into Michigan's public waters. And that is twice the amount of fish that they released in 2018. The lake surgeon can live for over 100 years and weigh a couple hundred pounds, and they're harmless bottom feeders, so we don't have to worry about them. Okay. But they are trying to make a comeback. Making a comeback. Yes. So my next one's February 15th episode, the Roden family slaughter. Okay. This is where the whole entire Roden family, except for the young children, were murdered. They lived in different homes, but this family supposedly went around planned and murdered and it wasn't slaughtered for all. um they wanted custody of one of the children that they shared between the families it was said to believe that that was the motive okay currently they are still in the pre-trial evidence discovery phase okay all evidence should be turned over to the defense by june 1st we should hear of the trial officially starting end of september it will be the first quarter of 2020 until we see the trial of the two grandmothers. So wow. remember the fan, the immediate family, Yeah, they were charged, but the grandparents were charged with accessory. Yeah, like basically like aiding and abetting yep. or whatever. So the, um, the family, with the exception of the two grandmothers, are in jail. Mm-hmm. The grandmothers are on house arrest with those... Ankle bracelets. Little GPS bracelets. Okay. So we'll hear more about that. And then I thought it was interesting, one of the articles I was reading, an updated article, about how they waive their right to a speedy trial. I'm always looking for that now. Oh, really? Since we did that. Why? That. I wonder why. I think it's because they said they said not guilty. Oh, okay. And because of all how long it would take for the evidence and... To turn it over. That's true. There's and multiple get that. crime scenes. It's really and... never, it couldn't be a speedy trial. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I have one from a podcast we did in January 2019 where I talked about the Northville Psychiatric Hospital. Yeah. It was established in 1952 and it was like luxurious mental health care. I, know. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Spas and everything. Yeah, but due to decline in state funding through the 70s and 80s, it became a site for abuse and neglect. So every building. On the sprawling three, 453-acre property was shut down in 2003. But And that's the one where my cousin Jay used to go hang out with his friends. Yeah. So today's information comes from an article. The city of Northville, as of today, um, has almost fully completed the demolition of the eight-story main hospital building. Officials say the building was an eyesore, a safety hazard, and it cost the city money to police it from trespassers. Which, for some reason, made me feel guilty. (laughs) (laughs) They still plan on building, like, apartment townhomes or some kind. Oh, over Eloise, they want to build, yeah, apartment. Oh, but not over this place. Oh, no, it's houses, I think. Houses. Yeah. (laughs) My next one is from March 16th episode, The Murder of Stephen McAfee. 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 M-C-A-F-E-E. Yeah. McAfee. Yeah. Okay, fine. Well, some people at work say McAfee, and some people McAfee. say McAfee, so yeah. Mm. It could be. Whichever. Yep. Andrew Fico. Yes. F-I-A-C-C-O. Was 
finally found guilty of the murder and dismemberment of Stefan. Okay. And he was sentenced to 52 years in prison. Now, remember, this is the guy that was best friend. Yeah. Stefan was his best friend. They were in the woods. He claims he was his Jump. best friend attacked him. He shot him. Yeah. Um, because you care, again, remember, when you go out with your friends, you carry a gun in the woods. Right. Um, left his body there. Yeah. Then brought his ex-girlfriend, showed him what he did. Yeah. Then they came back a while later, dismembered the body, buried him in the guy's backyard. Yeah. Didn't they pour cement on him, too? No. Not, not that one? Not this one. That was the Cocoa Beach. Oh, Okay. The lady that was buried alive. So, Yvette McDonald, that's his, Andrew's ex-girlfriend, who helped, was found guilty of accessory after the fact. She did a plea, so she only got one year in prison and three years probation. I think that's fine. Don't each of them have some type of mental... um, I don't remember her having one. Okay. But I remember them claiming Andrew did. Okay. So, mine is from a podcast we did in February of 2019, which is serial killer Leslie Allen Williams. Leslie was a habitual offender who Mm -hmm. attacked and raped women each time he was paroled. Yeah. So, after his last release from jail, he killed four young women and raped a nine-year-old girl. Yeah. It was his ex-girlfriend that led police to a field that ended up containing the bodies of the victims. Mm -hmm. So, our um, additional information for today comes from someone who contacted us via Facebook. And this person later deleted their post, so I'll keep their name private. Mm-hmm. But I will say what they said in the, because they did make it public for a moment. So, this is the quote. I was Leslie's girlfriend the whole time. I warned Wixom, and warned and Wixom are in all caps, police about the rape of a nine-year-old in the Milford area. They, capital, ignored me, and he went in on to kill four more. I was harassed by the Wixom police, Wixom police capital, Relentlessly, because they did not believe me, the Wixom the Police Department really messed up. And I did respond to her at that time, and I will say again, I do believe her. I really do. Because, I, I don't know, I worked at a courthouse with cops, I worked at a hospital with doctors, and I can tell you, there's for whatever you know profession you have, there are good ones and bad ones. Mm-hmm. And I believe that if she went to them and they did not follow up on it, that they would later harass her if she spoke out about it. Yeah, and I think in that story in a whole... He admitted. To her. <coughs> well, and didn't he admit to the police he's the guy that said, hey, he needs to be locked up? Yeah. Yeah, he was so So I like, think overall, yeah. I mean, they they screwed up. They screwed up. That's the one where the um, press and, you know, the parents went crazy on, like, how do you keep letting this dude out, especially after so little time? And every single time he leaves jail, he, you know, rapes or kills somebody. Like, why do you keep letting him out? Yeah. Yeah, that's one where the parole board at first was, like, not backing down, and Michigan changed their laws. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's yours? The next one I have is April 20th episode, Wilda Wilkinson. Okay. This is the lady who was at her home. Her home was being robbed. She was murdered at that point in 1986. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. And then the guy Keeps just confessing, recently, right? Yep, yeah. kept confessing. And they picked him up in California and they charged him. Yes. Okay. So, crazy interesting. Yeah. On May 4th, it was reported that Michael Curry, Curry's charges were dismissed. Okay. And he was released from jail. What? Yeah. He's confessed five times to murdering her and he's murdered somebody mm-hmm. else. Yep. And so they, and they pick him up. So they go out, pick him up from California, bring him all the way back to Van Buren to charge him, to ultimately release him. When the state police were asked if Michael Curry was still a suspect, yeah, they directed the question to the prosecutor's office. No reason has been given to why the charges were dropped at this point. But here in the next couple days, people believe that it'll come out, that they'll, they will announce why. Okay. They they left the guy. Well, then we're gonna so. have to do a, additional information part two at some point. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, need to know. Why. I was just like, wow, he confessed because all he these said, times. You you went to California and picked the dude up. You had to have something. But didn't you say at one point they dug up her body and found additional evidence? Mm-hmm. Gosh. Okay, so this one is from a podcast that we did in March of 2019. So I discussed the Mackinac Bridge uh, during a discussion about 20 things you might need to be explained if someone if. Not from if someone's not from Michigan. 
So the Mackinac Bridge is the largest suspension bridge in the Western Hemisphere, and it connects our upper and our lower peninsula. And we provide escort service to people that are too scared to drive across, right? Mm -hmm. Here's why. So today's additional information comes from my mom, Sheila. So my mom and my stepdad, Dave, went to the UP, the Upper Peninsula, to pick up a family tractor. Um, Dave collected John Deere tractors and memorabilia, and they were going to go get this really big tractor. Well, the day the two of them were supposed to cross the Mackinac Bridge south, back down to the Lower Peninsula, there was a high wind advisory. And the bridge was already closed to people driving north, because remember, a lady in the 1980s was like blown off the bridge and died. So they now close the bridge when the winds are too high. So the one side is already closed off and the south side's open. And that's the side they're on. The bridge authorities told my mom and stepdad that they couldn't cross unless semi-trucks were um, willing to drive alongside them to buffer them from the wind. So they're like, you can't cross unless oh, semi great. So three of the truck drivers agree and the four of them leave. So there's like, you know, trucks on all sides of them, the, all the, you know, the backside or whatever. And my mom said that you could feel their truck and the tractor trailer lifting up and getting pushed around by the wind. And my mom said she was like simultaneously praying and threatening my stepdad, telling him that she will never forgive him if they get blown off this. <laughs> and she drowns. Like, she's like, do that thing. That like, would I, be me. Yeah, it's like, oh my God, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to never forgive you. Like, <laughs> and she thought, yeah, she thought they were going over the edge like that poor lady in the 1980s. <laughs> I can't. I, I want to do it. Yeah. I want to see the UP. Yeah. But somebody's flying. During a low, there's a low wind be advisory. A plane. No, I can't. I'm so afraid of bridges. Just don't look. How would you even know you're on one? Because I would know. <laughs> yeah. You would need. Well, we'll just tell you ahead of time. Like, duck your head, and then no. we'll just wait and wait and wait. No, you'll have to. Well, when we go on trips, I always yeah. sit in the back seat. So you. you're up front. Yeah, I'm going to need to be sedated, but then I'm going to need you to jump out of the front seat and get in the back and hold me while you cross. <laughs> and like just rock there. you back and forth. Yeah. yeah. I checked into it, and you know how they have the drivers that will drive you across? Yeah. They, do, they don't allow you to be um, in a fetal position on the floorboard. So, Because I was like, I can do it if they just let me on the floorboard yeah. crying, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we'll I'm put a so whole bunch afraid. of we'll put a whole bunch of blankets. You should on you. see me when I when I was younger and my sister and I and our friends would go to Canada. Oh, let us oh, go the over the bridge. Oh, the ambassador bridge. Yeah, and then I so heights is a big thing for me, so that's why I don't like bridges. And then I don't like really enclosed spaces like those ones that you know that if something happened, you would just be buried alive and die. Yeah. So the tunnel to Canada was is the same. It was. Yeah. There was no win win for you it, for it you to just, get from America to Canada. Oh quickly. yeah, it was like so <laughs> bad. Like, can't we just fly? Right. Uh, for one podcast we did in March, I discussed potholes in Michigan. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I seen one the other day. I was up. Did you see a car disappear and then drive back in out onto the road? <laughs> this was so crazy. It was a few, uh, couple weekends ago. Yeah. I was out on Seven Mile Livonia area. Okay. On Farmington Road. Uh huh. And I'm driving, and all of a sudden I I see I'm like oh that's a pothole I'll kind of miss it. I get to this thing. This would have swallowed my F one fifty. Oh yeah, like I missed it. By you would have inches. drove into the pothole and they had to drive back out. I wouldn't out. have. I envisioned you would have just filled have the hit, hole in with your car. I wouldn't have even <laughs> filled the hole. I would have fallen in the hole and I could just see my oh. truck just flipping over. Right. Like it was crazy. I'll believe it. Oh. So there was an article I read. This happened in Nebraska, but it could have happened in Michigan. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this was um, brought to my attention by Kate. This an- this man had was suffering from a rapid heart bre- rapid heartbeat, and the ambulance that he- that was driving him to the hospital hit a pothole so hard that it knocked his it jolted his heart <laughs> rate back to normal. <laughs> and there's actually one other this case of this happening in the 1970s when an ambulance is driving, it hits a pothole really hard and it saves the patient. So if you so maybe if, if you were having a heart attack next time, aim toward that pothole. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. Like <laughs> if we're together yeah. and you have like a heart attack or something, yeah. I'm not gonna call the ambulance. We're just gonna get you in the car. I'm gonna yeah. hit the biggest goddamn pothole I can find. <laughs> right. So also for the the another follow up from the same podcast on March of 2019, I have that you know Michigan is the only state that's comprised of two peninsulas. Mm-hmm. Um, so here, here comes from an article. So in 2018, last year, we broke a le- record with the Great Lakes Surf Rescue Project, 
which tracks drowning deaths in the Great Lakes. And they've been doing it since um, 2010. 2018 was the first year the number of people people drowning went above 100. Wow. It went up to 110. And Lake Michigan took 39 lives, while 35 lives were lost in Lake Erie. And historically, nearly half of all water deaths occur on Lake Michigan. So August 5th, 2008, a human change pulled off five different struggling swimmers from the water. So, you know, people form a chain to the Mm -hmm. land. The executive director of the Great Lakes Surf Project, Rescue Project, blames the warm weather and high winds. It's warm, so we're going to the water. There's high winds. He said, people seeking relief from the heat are dismissing the warnings like rough surf, which my friends and I on Girls Weekend, we went out there. It was a rough surf warning. There were people swimming, but we were just getting drinks on the beach. So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. But people were ignoring the high wind warnings. So that's why they believe there's deaths, more deaths are yeah. caused because people ignore the warnings. People are ignoring the warnings and the weather's hotter, so more people are going to the water. But with our warmer weather, it's coming high winds. And we actually have riptides in the Great Lakes and stuff. People do drown. And actually, 85% of the deaths are African-American teenagers, males. Why uh, do you think that is? Um, I think they don't have as much swimming experience, and they're underestimating because it says lake, right? But you forget that these lakes are so big, they have rip tides, they swallow boats. They look like an ocean. They look like oceans. You can't see land from the other mm-hmm. side. So in an emergency, water emergency, rem- follow this reminder. Flip, float, follow. So flip on your back and remain calm so that you're going to float to the top, and then try to follow the rip tide. So if a rip tide is pulling you out, away from the shore, which is what they do. Don't try to swim back to the shore. Now you're fighting a riptide. Swim diagonally out of the riptide, but towards the shore. I wish people could see you right now with because your I'm hand hands. gestures. Yeah, your hand gestures. Yeah. Right. I'm trying to save I'm your life. I'm taking it in. I'm trying to save your life. Okay. So that's actually all hey. I have for now. That's all I got. Do you feel like you're going to survive a drowning now that I told that to you? Yeah. Probably. All I right. mean, when, yeah, because yeah. now we're in late season so i open the lake house and you open the lake house so yesterday it doesn't have things like that but in case it happens I'm gonna... i was say your lake is a little too little to have a yeah. riptide <laughs> but, but I know, if i remember correctly you can walk 15 feet out and be up to your shoulders <laughs> yeah, you <can. laughs> you've been listening to michigan and other mayhem with Allie and jen connect with us at michigan and other mayhem.com to join the conversation listen to the podcast access show notes find site links or correct us when necessary Rate and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Anchor, and YouTube. Bye-bye now.